speed reads all 12 houses starting with Aries moving all the way to Pisces full moons in Virgo in the sky right now general readings for the collective salutations welcome in welcome in it's good to see you. we're just turning on just tuning in if it's your first time here greetings as I mentioned we're gonna be reading for all 12 houses starting with Aries Flowing all the way through the zodiac. Good night, mate. Welcome in, Mandolin. Welcome in, my dudes. Salutations, salutations. Happy full moon. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Literally. Like that energy. Starting off the day, right? Lord of Wealth. Lord of Abundance. When we split the deck, we get the Ten of Pentacles. Three of Cups there. Ten plus three. You know what that means. Thirteen. Let's get to it. Happy Virgo Full Moon. As I said, we're going to be doing speed reads for all 12 houses. Aries through Pisces. Starting with Aries. House number one. Sun, moon, ascendance, wherever you have a Mars placement, wherever your rising sign is, your house number one. Greetings, welcome in. If, if it's your first time here, salutations. You can call me Zen. If you've been here before, welcome back. Good to see you. I like to see that going up quickly. Greetings, yes, more abundance in the universe. Indeed, keep it flowing. This is the way. Yes, so we're just about to be here. You're going to get yourself some water, some snacks, sit back, relax. We're going to be here for a bit. After the 12 houses, we'll probably open up for Q for personal readings. The information's there. If you want to drop in right now, you're welcome to do so. But you can sit back, relax, and just enjoy the collective readings for now. Shouts out, Aries in the house. We are here. We are ready. We are flowing. While we're shuffling these last couple of more shuffles, if you want to, you can hit the copy of the link down there. The likes are always appreciated. The gifts are always appreciated. My subscribers will get a card or two. Yes. Not in the middle of all 12 houses, but afterwards, if they stay, and always when you're here just chilling, appreciate y'all and your presence. Your presence is a gift. Thank you for being here, sitting witness, and enjoying this space with us, co-creating this play today. What a treat it is. Yes, collective. Let's get to it. We are here for it. Katrina, I see you. Thank you for the gift. You know it. <laughs> Feeling extra leering today. Yes. We are ready to play. All right. Aries, sun, moon, ascendance. Cut the deck. Clear it. Draw. Two. We also flip the deck upside down to show the root. Today we have the Zen Osho Tarot from the draw. We also have the Hermetic Tarot here in my hand. We're going to draw six cards for all 12 houses. Today is today. Ready to play, they're about to jump on my hands, but we got it, we're still here. Sun, moon, ascendant, Aries, my dudes. First and foremost, we have courage here, reverse in the root. Change. Harmony. Excuse me, right side up, not in reverse. The Lord of Prudence here. In reverse. Eight of Pentacles, Lord of Prudence. Lord of Material Trouble. Five of Pentacles, also in reverse. Lord of Ruin. Here in the root. My dudes. 
Aries, we came out to play today. Ten of Swords right there, ready to say that it is important to practice prudence. More so with your energy over everything, your attention and your energy. Utilizing courage to recognize that change is always happening. Embrace this change courageously so that you can make so that you can and may move into these next chapters with harmony, in harmony, to the frequency of harmony. You are the Lord of Ruin. What does this mean? What does that look like to you? It could be terrifying at first because ruin isn't necessarily a positive thing. However, if you can ruin the ruins, if you can be the one who's ruining the ones who are creating ruin, basically, so the obstacles, the habits, the patterns, the beliefs, the attachments, the ideas that you may be personifying with, holding on to, identifying with, that are ruining your ability to step into your courage, to change, to harmonize, you're learning how to ruin those patterns programs so you can actually shift the dynamic. It's like a double negative. It's like, yeah, it's like a double negative. That's a, that's a, that's, I'm going to leave it at that. So when it comes to like material trouble, you practice prudence, learning how to ball on a budget, learning how to be extra particular about your time, effort, and energy. I'm not necessarily saying being hyper conservative, but being prudent. Prudence is the key. So if you want to hear a song, definitely encourage you to go look up Dear Prudence by the Beatles, as you know, so you can sing in harmony. Is it a, is it a Madison's birthday today? Fellow Pisces in the room, I see you, my dude. Yes, Aries, it does take courage to change, to sing to the tune of harmony, to practice prudence and choosing to put an end to all of the self-sabotaging patterns, put a ruin to the ruins. Indeed, Collective Aries. Like I said, these are speed reads, so we're gonna keep flowing. House number two, up next, Taurus. This is values, this is values, internal worth. Sun, moon, ascendance, Venus, we're here for it. Happy birthday to all you beautiful babes. Mine's on Monday. Shouts out to the squad. We got my pod out here. The fish, we are swimming. It's good to see you. And everybody else in the room, wherever your 12th house is, wherever your Neptune placement is, we got some fish energy always. Up next, we got Taurus. Sun, moon, ascendant. So let's get to it. Cut this deck. Clear it. Flow. Yes. I see you, my dudes. House number two. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. As always, if it resonates, you're always welcome to drop that sunflower emoji. Let me know that it rings true to your ears, if you wish. For you, Taurus, house number two, sun, moon, ascendance, Venus. In the root, the Zeno Shotero. Participation. Silence here in the draw. Source in reverse. Queen of Cups here. Knight of Cups in reverse. Lord of the Waves of the Waters. Queen of the Thrones of the Waters. And the judgment here. Last judgment. The spirit of primal fire. Taurus, house number two, sun, moon, ascendance, Venus. Strong energy reminding us that we are participating with source in this moment. And you can hear how it speaks through it, the silence. In the pauses, in the moments in between. We have to allow ourselves time to process the process, to step into the liminal spaces, to step into the places that are not so popular. Learning how to dive into one's depths and sit in the waters. And still choosing to stay grounded and on your throne. Being here capable of harnessing the waters, the emotion, the feelings, the frequencies that it is that you may be experiencing and learning how to utilize this judgment with the utmost consciousness and awareness to step into the reality that it is that you wish to create. Go on, puppy. Excuse me, puppy over here. 
gets a bunny. Spot. Gets a bunny. Groovy. Do you have to go outside? She has to go outside. I wasn't sure. She, there's the treats on the table. She was trying to get those, but she has to go outside. Taurus. We're allowed to value our connection with Source. We're allowed to participate with the stillness, and it's important for us to listen to the silence. Remember that every single instant we have the ability to utilize our judgment, our awareness, to continue to step into and build the reality that it is that we wish to. I see you, house number two. This is this is an important value. You're allowed to value your connection with the Source, and you're allowed to value silence, and you're allowed to value proper participation. I had to get that message out before I let the puppy out. I'm gonna let the puppy out, we'll be right back. For house number three, Gemini babies. Hey, Nora. see house number three are you ready Taurus did you get that silence did that space away from me for a second allow you to process some silence and connect to source and tune into the waters within you and all around you so that you may channel it in a way that harnesses your primal fire as a creator so you can continue to co-create the reality that it is that you wish to see good I'm proud of you keep it up Gemini house number three Sun moon ascendant mercury Mercury placement, house number three, is communication, how you are speaking, how you are communicating your values onto the world, how you are communicating yourself onto the world. House number three, house number three, Gemini energy for you. Come on, dude. Let's check it. Let's try that again. Take two. Gemini's in the room. Where's your Where's your house number three? That full moon energy is strong this eve. Yes, we are ready. Gemini, I see you here. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, let's get it. Where do we start? Good news or bad news first? Let's get it. All right, we're going to start. There's no such thing as either, right? The Wheel of Fortune of Life. Let's start here. In the draw, Gemini, house number three. Lord of the forces of life. The Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel. Next to it, Lord of Despair and Cruelty. Nine of Swords. Root. Ace of Cups. Lord of the Roots of the Powers of Water. Gemini, house number three. In the Zeno Shotero, we have new visions. Reverse. Healing. Right side up. Schizophrenia. In the root. In reverse. 
No, Gemini, you are not schizophrenic. You just hear shit because you're literally the embodiment of communication. House number three is the embodiment of communication. When it comes to being hypersensitive, yes, Gemini, you are, and you don't oftentimes get credit for it because everyone's so focused on calling Pisces sensitive all the time. It's all right. We'll take it for you. Gemini, you're healing your vision. You're learning how to step into this Ace of Cups energy and see reality for what it is that you make it. And you're done with all the gaslighting. You're done with all the limits that are attempted to be pushed, pushed or pressed onto you by a, a system that is not capable of handling your truth. Now is your time. A system that is built on despair and cruelty. And now you're up, outgrowing this. Um, let's, it's like... It's like you're, you're evolving. You're growing as an individual. And it's like... You've outgrown this outfit. Now it's too tight on you. It's, 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 it's trying to hold you back and you feel despair and cruelty. It's as if almost sometimes it feels like someone's trying to keep this straight jacket on you. So you can't even grow. But you're too strong, bro. You're too strong. You're stronger than you know. You're about to bust out this bitch. And you're not too crazy for thinking that either. That schizophrenia card, that gaslighting, like people, the world trying to project that nonsense onto you. Like, y'all want to hear a fun fact? Just a not-so-fun fact, maybe? Just, like, you know what they used to do with people like you and I? Before, after the witch trials? When they, when they had to stop, you know, burning us. <laughs> Asylums. You ever heard of those? And how they've attempted to stop people from sharing truth and mystic capacity by putting them, just, like, claiming them to be crazy, right? Right? Good. Okay, we're healing that as a collective, as a collective Gemini house number three here, but it starts with you and how you're communicating with yourself and the world around you. How can we be more informed when it comes to communication and how our words make an impact on the world around us? How can we continue to fine-tune to the frequency of fortune, not only for oneself, because that's selfish. How can we fine-tune to the frequency of a way that is self centered and supporting the collective, seeing it in a way that is Self-care is community care, collective care. Self-care is community care, collective care. Community care is self-care. Collective care is self-care. Harmonious. As we do one thing, we do all things. Symbiosis is the mission. How can we cultivate relationships where both parties are benefiting and we're minimalizing our contribution to despair and cruelty in the world? This is why it's so important to be cognizant and, and centered when communicating. It's so exciting to communicate. It's so exciting to share our truth, especially when we feel like we have something to share and we got a new vision. But first, we got to heal before we can communicate from... Because otherwise, we're communicating from wounds. We're just peeling scabs. Can you explain what you said after burning us? I don't know what you're saying. How did I burn you? The way you speak is beautiful. Hey, thank you. Ace of Cups. Here, my dudes, reminding us... Ever and eternally, we are overflowing. The source is within you, and it's important to continue to craft one's focus and one's visions on the frequency of fortune. Ah, after burning the witches, can you explain what asylums, asylums, have you ever heard of asylum? Asylum, like insane asylums? They don't use that word anymore, they just call them um, inpatient therapy these days but they used to lock people away for their entire lives to give them lobotomies and shit you know that right you've seen those movies with Jack Nicholson <laughs> it was it was like it was normalized you know so like people who thought outside the box people who were not built for the matrix the box of that matrix this mental box that keeps everybody trapped in but you're growing out of it, Gemini. You're you're overgrowing it, in fact, like the box is fucking terrified because it's no longer be a box. Get get any of that? <laughs> the grippy sock place. Yeah, the one with the padded rooms and walls. <laughs> oh no, no, no just, not just that one. That one's the old school one. Sorry, I, lifetimes. All right, house number four. We got cancer on the way. <laughs> my crabs, my dudes, I love you. Let's get to it. Sun, moon, ascendant. House number four. This is the home within. This is where you are 
speak and, and then feeling and then sitting in that communication and that value and the oneness. This is the reverberation. This is where the water flows. The bird who flew over the cuckoo's nest. That's right. Good film. Welcome in. Welcome in, my dudes. We got house number four to complete the first decade today. Sun, moon, ascendant, wherever you may be. We cut the deck. We cleared the energy. Okay, Cherry, I appreciate you and your comments. Very kind of you to drop those. The reminders never hurts. Never hurts. 7.7142. 7, that one's for you. That one's for you. Yes, Cancer, my dudes, we're here for it. We're here for it. Whoa, Nelly. All right, let's get to it. Mm -hmm, I love these cards. Once again, we have the Ace of Cups. This time, reverse in the root. House number four, Squad. We have Courage, reverse in the root on the other side. Slowing down, reversing the draw. Sharing, reverse, and the draw as well. We have the Emperor here in the draw, right side up. Fortitude, strength. Daughters of the Flaming Sword here. Cancer. House number four. It's time to start seeing yourself as this. The Emperor of your reality. It's time for you to take responsibility. And it's time for you to continue to fine-tune your strengths and to train. It takes courage to go out there and radiate your essence. It also is important that you slow down so you can actually get to know yourself on this level. Because you love to do this. You love to share. You love to be Ace of Cups. Cancer loves to care so much, bro. <laughs> And it's important to now fine-tune that strength of the care and learning how to slow down and shift it and amplify and uh, complement it with courage, to care with courage. Because I think sometimes, oftentimes, house number four can be sheepish and I would just want to say immature um, because insecurities. From what I've witnessed in just the patterning of house number four, uh, and this is why it's so important to have a foundation of fortitude and to basically recognize that you, my dude, are the emperor of your reality. It's important for you to continue to show up and share your gifts, your presence with the world within and all around you, especially with yourself. This is where the slowing down comes into play. This is where the Ace of Cups and Reverse Energy comes into play as well. Recognizing how you can turn these cards right side up into your space. Integrate these strengths that are here and just learning how to tap into them without fear. Learning how to release it. Learning how to continue to step into your throne. Your throne. Recognizing that your body, this is the throne. This is the throne. You are the one who's sitting in the body, who's choosing to move throughout time and space. You are not the body. The body is an extension of you. How can you continue to see yourself and your extensions of you? As your empire, you don't have to take over the world. You're just allowed to see yourself as something that is regal and royal and worth value beyond currency in the way that capitalism has taught you to see values, but more so learning how to step into things that are important like fortitude, strength, and courage and valuing yourself so much that you actually allow yourself to slow down and give yourself time and space to share with yourself and let that cup overflow onto the self and then onto the world around you. All right, house number four, I gotta let the puppy inside. We'll be right back.
House number five. Like I said, speed reads. Leo, up next. Sun, moon, descendants. House number five. This is the e ego. This is your expression of self. This is how you present yourself to the world. This is how you radiate your cosmic essence onto thine reality. House number five. Sun, moon, ascendant. Let's start here. We have guilt in the root. Of the Zeno Shotero, we have possibilities in reverse. We have creativity right side up in the draw. In the opposite deck, the universe in reverse. The Great One in the Night of Time. Lord of Prudence, Eight of Pentacles. Two of Cups, Lord of Love, Reverse. House number five, Leo's. Getting the sense when it comes to the ego, I'm not necessarily getting, I think this reading is more based on house number five rather than Leo's themselves because I don't think Leo's really experienced much of this sensation if I'm going to be real with you in my personal relationship with Leo's. I think more so it comes to other people and their relationship with their own fifth house and their ego because this world teaches us to demonize our egos it teaches us that egos are bad <coughs> you know you see excuse me you see in the like mainstream and like the new age narrative that like you need to kill your ego that's not the case in fact it's impossible because the ego is a byproduct of the body you the ego is a byproduct of the body even people who think that they have killed their ego that's still just their ego either being suppressed or just being so like mellow that it's just like I am not even a human I am simply a cosmic conduit and letting like it's not you know very more so robotic and whatnot oftentimes um even if it is like transcendent it can be joyous but even the joyous ego is an ego still nonetheless this is where like possibility is everything and learning how to focus one's fifth house energy into a creative fashion this is where prudence comes into play this is where recognizing that you are the creator of your reality and you're allowed to race you're allowed to own this you're allowed to embrace this with responsibility radically and it's important to do so with love you are the lord of love fifth house learning to step into the ego as the lord of love learning how to utilize the ego as a being who makes love to reality Prudence is key when it comes to this, learning how to slow down, learning how to see all the infinite possibilities right before your very eyes, because this universe is expansive and wild and amazing. But we get stuck in cycles like this. Oh, am I doing too much? Am I doing enough? Oh, what if, how does this person think about me? Yada, yada, yada. Like just those things, those kinds of thoughts, doubts, worries, concerns that are not necessarily within our control. How can we continue to slow down and instead choose to move in a more creative fashion rather than a uh, self, not necessarily self-destructive, that could be a way, but even just like demonizing the sense of self and like instead how can we be more encouraging? Definitely seeing how society, especially the church, utilizes guilt and shame as a means of oppressing people from stepping into their power and learning their gifts and their talents. Even just making someone feel guilty for, like, playing with tarot. Someone trying to jump into a tarot live stream and be like, what you're doing is of the devil's work. That's like someone trying to make someone feel guilty for doing something that is not cool and it happens all the time, right? Learning how to still recognize that you hold just you hold the power within your reality you hold the throne as the empire 
going back to the previous reading. So how can we continue to move in a way in accordance to the tune, the Lord's love and prudence, slowing down, never doing too much. And that's the other thing, Leo. It's like, there's never too much, but prudence doesn't hurt either. Everything is time and space and context. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And we are flowing forward. Next, we have house number six, Virgo. Sun, moon, ascendant, Mercury placement. Virgo is currently where the moon is full, ready to move. Yes, yes, yes. Next. House number six, we're going to flow forward. Capricorn is house number 10. We will get there, my friend. Suns, moons, ascendants, wherever your Mercury placement is, wherever your house number six is, this is work. That's good. That was a good shuffle. Cut that deck. 33 angels in this room. Let's get it, my dudes. Hmm. Virgo. Work. The cards are listening. Let's start over here. Guidance, number three, in the root. The fool here. Right side up. Innocence. Reverse. Oh, house number six, full moon in Virgo. This is a solid synchronicity. This is how you know the universe is looking over us right now. We got the fool in both decks. I didn't even realize that. We got the foolish man over here in the Hermetic Tarot, the spirit of the elder. That's a good That's a good sign. When you're playing with two decks, you got all these cards. Like, what are the odds? I mean, you can do the math if you really want to do the math, you fucking dork. I love you. <laughs> Lord of material success right there. That's the math. That's the math. Six of Pentacles. And the Knight of Swords here in reverse in the root. Lord of the Winds and the Breezes. When it comes to the work, a big part of it is learning that you don't have to work. Wu Wei. Wu Wei. Have you heard of the Tao? House number six, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Ascendance, Mercury, the Tao. May seem foolish, may seem nonsensical, may seem silly, may seem innocent. The Tao is the ultimate guide. And the key to quote unquote material success, which ultimately has nothing to do with the form and everything to do with the feeling. Learning how to communicate onto the earth and recognize what our feelings are speaking. Your feelings speak to you. The way you feel in a moment tells you everything about that situation and your relationship with that frequency and that state of being. What do you like to feel? How do you want to feel? How can you continue to cultivate a life that promotes those feelings that it is that you wish to continue to share and grow? Ultimately, this is material success, that which is eternal. Even on that level, Wu Wei. Learning to work without working at all is the key. So even if you're at your job, how can you then shift your reality and be like, man, I'm so mad that I'm here right now working for this other person. Being like, nah, perspective is everything. How can I sit back to my thoughts even in that state of being and choose to reclaim your power and how you're moving through? One way could be that one way to do that could simply express gratitude to the fact that you have the capacity and ability to work that job. And then shifting your intention 
to recognizing that you're working that job to then move closer to the dreams that it is that you wish to move to recognizing that you don't have to stay attached or stuck in one space too long you're allowed to open yourself up to adventure especially with the fool here doubly the real work i'm getting the sense that like yeah this year right around the corner key very big time to allow yourself to open up your mind's eye to perceive how you are communicating with the world around you be open to guidance being open to share your guidance as well focusing on your intentions as they continue to manifest right before your very eyes knowing that a big key to this is also innocence doing your best too like and that's like that's also a big big indicator like innocence and the fool the fool's a very innocent individual they're moving through life as if nothing could go wrong as if the universe is always supporting them holding up every single step of the way knowing this is the key in learning how to exercise and practice your personal relationship to facilitate cultivate nourish your dreams groovy 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 house number six that's a solid reading i'm here for it we got the six of pentacles right there too that's just you know house number six pentacles earthly element virgo synchronicities on synchronicities we can always find more yeah yes 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 sun moon ascendance libra up next house number seven perfectly timed salutation my dudes and welcome in we're gonna flow forward yes indeed Groovy, groovy, groovy. the recording of this reading will be up on youtube tomorrow or so so if you want to check that out if you missed your house or you just simply want to listen to this you're always welcome to do so next house number seven libra relationships connections co-creation for you my dudes house number seven house number seven we cut the deck we clear it let it rest Thank you for the gift. Ready. Of course, Libra. Of course, we're in the flow right now. We got two very strong synchronicities in a row. Just so I can back up what I just said, just to give you evidence, because I know you need your evidence to be proven. Thanks for the gift, by the way. We got the justice card here in the reverse. For you, my dude, Libra. Daughters of the Lord of the Truth. Justice. It's a very big part of this reading, so hold on to that. We got the Empress here, right side up. Daughters of the Mighty Ones. Empress. Queen of Wands. Queen of the Thrones of Flames. Morality. Also going along justice. We got morality in the root. In reverse. Hermetic Tarot. The Burden. Also in reverse. Isolation. Also in reverse. Only one card right side up. That's the Empress where you are right now you've made it to the throne you've made it you're here now it's the integration the real challenge is cutting cords because libra you love to connect you're literally the house of connection and balance and a big part of connection is to bring justice to your soul's experience and your contracts and what it is that you're here to do and why you chose to be in this body at this point in time and who you are choosing to connect with right now is the time for some self-reflection looking in the eyes it doesn't mean you're cold-hearted to cut these cords it doesn't mean that you're um immoral even to set boundaries learning how to actually stand in tune with your boundaries and sometimes doing so will feel like you're isolating yourself because you're recognizing that like whoa like i didn't realize like how I've just been allowing myself to entertain these patterns, programs, relationships that are not actually in alignment with who I see myself to be, where I know I can make my way to. Basically just like choosing to stay in spaces because they're familiar or because you feel like you owe something 
you don't have to practice compassion on that level. You don't have to sacrifice or surrender your morality in order to appease somebody else. Right now, your practice and your magic is to tap into your passions and dive deep into this so much that, you know, you might even be isolating yourself. Like right now, Libra, we're getting very strong shadow and self-work and recognizing how that's a burden low key like to take on all this and sometimes it can feel like burdensome to be the one who's choosing to be good in the world especially in a world that looks so bad you know like learning how to also bring justice to the world but within as well as the world without like it can feel very burdensome sometimes but that's just the ego that's just the 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 persona that's just the identification of um one's reality which is you know totally valid you you should have some level of of responsibility and identification with your experience of course like this is your life and there's no way to run from it good quote right now it's also important to recognize that you're an empress like you don't have to waste your time effort and energy on people who are not capable of seeing you on this level and that can be a burden at first to be like, wait, I'm a fucking empress. And if you don't see yourself on that level, that's not my responsibility. That's not my business. That's not my problem. And I'm not going to accept any nonsensical feedback any longer. I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, like I hear what you're saying. Maybe I'm not an empress. Nah, bullshit. I am. <laughs> it's important to continue to stand by your truth. All right, we're going to flow forward. I love that reading. Just can't can't overstate the importance of the synchronicity with the Justice card there. Step into your Empress energy, this frequency. Do not be afraid to be by yourself. In fact, you are your best company if I'm going to be real with you. Godspeed. House number eight, Scorpio, today. Sun, moon, ascendant, Scorpio. Pluto placements, that one's staying. House number eight, transformation, death, marriage. Let's get to it. Sun, moon, ascendants, and Pluto, my dudes for dudes. Clear it, cut it, draw. Hmm, flowing off the energy of the previous reading, cutting cords and whatnot, Scorpio. Lord of Abandoned Success, Eight of Cups here. Mandy, good to see you, welcome in. Right now we're reading for all 12 houses, we're on house number 8, Scorpio, today. We have the Eight of Cups there, house number 8. Eight of Cups. Saturn in Pisces, bro. That's literally today, bro. That's three amazing synchronicities right in a row. Saturn, Pisces. Let's fucking do this. Eight of Cups. I don't know if y'all know what's happening right now, but it's happening right now. And that's right, because we got the dream here. Pisces, the dream. House number six, that's me. Welcome. Salutations. New vision. Excuse me, not house number six, but card number six. New visions. Healing. And harmony in reverse. Scorpio. Fortitude. Strength. Happy belated. Congratulations on another successful revolution around the sun. Of course. House number eight, we have the Queen of Wands here. Following that energy of cutting cords and whatnot, abandoning ideas that you thought maybe were successful once upon a time, and choosing to surrender one's attachment onto the dream, choosing to envision a new vision, one that is more harmonious, more healing, stronger than ever as well. This is the magic of alchemy. The Queen of Wands here utilizing the energy, whatever the universe is throwing at you, and still choosing to make a brew that is badass, that will continue to pull you in the direction of your truth and your dreams and what it is that you wish to do. 
following your strength, following your path of healing and harmony. Recognizing that honestly, it's not about you. No offense. And it is at the same time, that's the balance. Which is funny because underneath, underneath the Eight of Cups, we have a Nine of Cups. It's just like, Lord, Lord of material happiness. Underneath that, Lord of abandoned success. Getting this idea that like, once, once again, I don't know if you heard me say it earlier, but material happiness has nothing to do with the form and everything to do with the frequency and everything to do with the feeling learning how to continue to sit in the center and choose fortitude, choose the intention of healing. This is a lifelong journey and it continues to evolve in so many forms and fashions. You are the dreamer of the dream. Do not get stuck in the vision. It is always okay, never too late to step into a new vision. It takes strength, patience, temperance, that you have it, and the cards are encouraging you to continue to recommit and commit yourself to the healing, to the harmony for yourself and for the world around you. Absolutely. Eight. We're going to flow forward. Indeed. Scorpio, Godspeed. Next, we have Sagittarius, house number nine, higher communication. Sun, moon, ascendance, ash. Thanks for the gifts. Appreciate this. Sun, moon, ascendance, Jupiter placement, Sagittarius, house number nine. This is higher intelligence. This is that like telepathy energy. As I do that, innocence jumps in. <clears throat> All right, house number nine. Today for you, mighty. in the root, child of the great transformers, for you, house number nine. Two of swords here, lord of peace restored. Reverse. Knight of pentacles, lord of the wild and fertile land. Sagittarius, my dudes, definitely getting a strong sense, house number nine, of how <sighs> the tides are a turning, especially if you've been doing that internal shadow work, you've been committing yourself to the path, even if you just choose to start to jump on that path right now, this very instant, it's impeccable what quantum leaps can do, I'm telling you what. You can choose to release and put to rest all of the patterns, the limits, that which is stepping in the way of you stepping into your greatness. You are now being invited and encouraged to continue to cultivate this space of wild and fertile and freedom to bring justice to your internal and to restore peace within, to rebirth your reality and continue to see yourself as the architect, as the creator, as the one who is participating. Be friendly with yourself. Stand true to your morals. Continue to integrate and stand by your values. Living to these will continue to remind you that death is an illusion. And what we've been taught about it is extremely limiting, myopic. And I think there's a lot of, uh, let's just say argument for the sake of the argument, against this concept that we call death. In fact, I'm pretty sure that most of us can live forever. 
There's plenty of resources. There's plenty of space. Yes, this is the way. If you want to, you can live as long as you want. You can live as long as you want. That's up to you. That's you and your relationship with the world. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. Sagittarius, just the higher information right now is like, you can literally live as long as you want. If you want to heal, you can heal. If you want to live for 300 years, you can live for 300 years. How do the trees do it? One day at a time. Energy is forever. And we're always being rebirthed and revitalized and restored. Every single day, we are rebirthed. And every single night, we go to rest. Yes, it's learning how to embrace these aspects of the reality and then continue to choose to move in a way that is in alignment with your core. With your core. That's how you restore peace. Within and all around thee. The kingdom is closer than your nose and your toes. Don't you know it? Transformation is happening always. Stay true. Stay true. Godspeed. House number nine. My dudes. Next up, Capricorn. Number ten. This is Legacy. This is Persona. This is... Also, Collective Governance. Yes. And just governance in general, in general, how you govern your own life, ultimately, because you are the creator, and no one can take that away from you. Sun, moon, ascendance. No one can take that away from you. Do you get any of that? You are the creator, and no one can take that away from you. Sun, moon, ascendant. Capricorn. Wherever you have a Saturn placement, Saturn's about to make its way in Pisces, like, right now, as we're talking, it's going to be a fun next two and a half years. Let's get to it. Sun, moon, ascendant. Capricornicus. Look at the deck. We clear it. We'll shuffle over here. The outsider. Here in the root. Patience. Reverse. Yeah, death isn't meant to be scary. The miser here, number four. Capricorn. Number four, we have the miser in reverse. The miser, patience, the outsider. We have the Lord of Valor, Seven of Wands. Princess of Wands, Princess of the Shining Flame. And the Queen of Pentacles in the Root, Queen of the Thrones of Earth in Reverse. Capricorn. I think the cards are commending you more so than anything here and encouraging you to be continue to create this space from this miserly energy in fact like i'm getting this what my what my intuition wishes to communicate is like you're allowed to actually place yourself outside of this energy like you don't have to entertain this energy anymore you don't have like, you, you're done serving Baba Yaga. You're not her servant anymore. You don't owe that bitch a damn thing. You're allowed to put yourself outside of that. It just takes patience. It takes resilience and consistency to remember that you are no longer that part of the life. That chapter is over. You have made it. You're here in the Lord of Valor. You're a success. Full. And now's your time to continue to ground into your regal aspects. The Princess of Wands here is reminding you to cultivate your passion, your internal flame, that connection within you. And the Queen of Pentacles is then encouraging you to embody it, integrating that flame. So it literally just exudes from your pores. You wake up every day just lit. You got that eternal spark right here. And it's hot. Look at you go. I'm proud of you. 
It's because you've been caring for yourself. It's because you've been cleaning internally. It's because you have been putting up boundaries so that these energies no longer have any space within your place. It's taking patience, taking persistence, resilience. They're keys. Indeed. But right now, the reality that it is that you wish to create is to be birthed right before your very eyes. Yeah, right before your very eyes. And it's you don't have to concern yourself about being an outsider. In fact, I think that right now, Saturn and Capricorns maybe, or just anyone with like heavy Capricorn placement or Saturn energy, are going to feel outsiders these next couple of years. Um, because Saturn and Pisces is not really a, a not really a natural common combination. We got one 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 up there, thirty six over here. Saturn and Pisces is just like different, bro. It's just different, bro. Just be excited, brace yourself. You're the creator of your reality. You choose what timeline you want to step into. Be patient. Continue to stand to the tune, the frequency, the vibration of valor. Set those boundaries and continue to honor your discipline and that what it is that you wish to allow and what it is that you will not allow in your life. Focus on your flame, cultivating your passions and embody them so they sustain. It's not just a one and done kind of thing. It's lifelong. This is, or at least the next two and a half years while, <laughs> yeah, while Saturn's up in Pisces, that's the truth. Like these, this, these next two years are really going to shift the rest of the life. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. House number 11, Aquarius. Sun, moon, ascendance, Uranus, Aquarius. You are the creator. You are the creator. You are the creator. Sun, moon, ascendance. Yes. Aquarius, cut the deck, clear it. Uranus. This is collective energy. This is universal wisdom. This is communicating laws and values on a societal level. Yes, Aquarian age energy is everybody. As we say it, as we say it, Aquarian age energy, as we say it, Aquarian age energy, Clinging to the past is the first card that we drew. Sun, moon, ascendant, Aquarius. Going with the flow in reverse. The lovers in reverse in the root. Four of cups in reverse. Queen of Cups, right side up. Ace of Wands. In reverse. Ash, I appreciate you. You're so supportive and encouraging, and that really does... I receive that. That really does feel that in my core. Thank you, dearly. It's an honor to be able to do this. The Ace of Wands here in reverse in the root. Lord of Root of Powers of Fire. House 11. Right now, what's stopping you from stepping into the Aquarian Age? Are you ready to surrender this? Are you ready to release that weight that's holding you back from going with the flow? Can you love it all unconditionally, radically embrace it, choose to reclaim your power, call upon your strengths and your gifts, and continue to blend the pleasures, find the pleasure within the pains, within the challenging aspects of the experience and the difficulties within life. Learning to continue to sit with one's emotions, all of them, even the ugly ones, especially the ugly ones, especially the painful ones. Learning how to still not allow them to take you off your throne. Queen of Cups is an individual who's able to feel all of the feels and still stay grounded and controlled and centered. They're not placing them on the shelf they're not they're not bypassing their emotions they're just present with them and still focused we got two 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 up there ace of wands here is showing you that you have the capacity to harness your 
emotions, your passions, and then utilize them as a means of your magic. These feelings that it is that you feel, they're your energy in motion. And it's important to learn how to channel your energy in emotion as an alignment with however it is that you wish. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm just saying, you know, you're the creator and you are allowed to choose a life of lovers. For me, I think it's very important for us to recognize that we are creator. We are divine. We are all created through the merging of masculine and feminine. I love to choose love. I love to choose the frequency of love. I feel like when we are choosing a frequency of love, this is how we are able to love the process, even the pain, and still try finding a way to transmute the past, let go of it, learn our lessons from it, and then flow forward. This is how you step into your magic and recognize that everything does have purpose, even if you are just the one giving it purpose. You're the creator. You get to give it purpose. And you're also a queen sitting here in the throne, in the seat, harnessing that water. Like, we've got strong water out here, by the way. Going with the flow of four of cups, queen of cups. Just Piscean energy is strong out here, Aquarius. I know you're airy. It's a difference. Subtly different. Air is much thinner water. Water is denser. Water, water is denser air. Or... Or air is simply super high frequency water. Air is simply very, very thin water. I mean, there's water in the air all the time. We're, we're swimming right now. Everything is water. Water is life. Keep swimming. In. All right, Pisces. Happy birthday, you fish. Happy birthday, you fish. Salutations. Yes, house number 12. This is the subconscious. This is the dream. This is beyond belief. This is connection to other worlds, dimensions. That which is not capable of being defined. Pisces for you tonight. Sun, moon, ascendance, house number 12. Cut the deck. Neptune placement, wherever you may have. These cards came out to play for you. Happy birthday. The only one that's right set up is the inner voice and the root of these in Ocho Toro. Slowing down. Reverse. The burden. Reverse. Pisces, this is your year. Six of Cups. Reverse. It's only getting started. Lord of Pleasure. Six of Cups. Scorpio Sun. Lord of Abundance. Three of Cups. Lord of Abundance. Mercury and Cancer. Temperance. Reverse in the Root. Happy birthday, babies. Shouts out to the pod. We are swimming. Listen to your inner voice and don't you stop. We got temperance and slowing down. Both very important. The energy I'm getting is the speed that it takes to swim upstream. Of course, it's going to appear slow because you're literally going in the opposite direction of everybody else. That's the burden. Slowing down. But you know that's where it happens, right? You heard the story of the the goldfish, yeah? Or the koi. The golden koi. The golden koi fish. The golden fish fish. The golden koi. And how one day he decided to swim in reverse up the stream. Turn around. Go the opposite direction. 
Swam, swam, swam. It appears slow to everybody else. It takes temperance. It takes passion, patience. You know, I can't even. Actually, I can. <laughs> the resilience it takes to swim upstream. To go against the current. To choose not to conform. To choose to move in a way that is in tune with one's soul rather than a stream, a mainstream that is not in alignment with your soul speak. You know what happens when the koi fish makes its way to the top of the waterfall eventually? It turns into the dragon. And here you are. Everything on point, never lagging. The dragon. Becoming the Lord of Abundance, the Lord of Pleasure, Six of Cups, Three of Cups. Learning how to embrace these burdens radically and knowing that everything is what you make it. When you embrace your experience with temperance and you slow down, all of the burdens are blessings too. You know this, my dude. You're Pisces. You, you literally do this. No one gets it except for you. Except everybody gets it. They just forgot that they got it. And then you're trying to explain it without sounding crazy because it's really challenging to speak it in this language. Because this language was not meant for this. English was not meant for this. But you're doing it and you're leading by example and you're helping your other, your fellow fish do it as well. So learning how to see the burden as a blessing and learning how to continue to be wise with your energy and recognize that you don't have to overbite or you know, take on burdens that are not of your worthwhile. That whole swimming upstream energy is a big part of that as well. Getting that. Because I also know that you love to help and you hate seeing people in pain. So learning how to be discerning with situations and circumstances has been always honoring your inner voice and recognizing the context of everything. I kind of just want to add that like little last bit. Thanks, Ash. Yeah, house number 12. We're flowing. We're flowing. We are, we are. Love the cards. Indeed. 13, 33. 3, 3. Not many thoughts on Vedic astrology. Don't really know much about it. Honestly, I don't know what, enough about it to develop an opinion on it, but I think there's a reason why my soul doesn't really have any calling to explore it. And that's me. And, I, and that's not bias either. Like, I love Vedic information. I, I love Vedic wisdom. I love the knowledge. <laughs> We're here for the truth. We're here for the wisdom. At the same time, it's just like, I don't know. I haven't felt the passion for it, so maybe one day if it feels like, I mean, that's right for me, but it just, it seems convoluting, you know, you know, if, yeah, whatever. It's always convoluting when you add extra stuff and you, you know, someone's trying to say, oh, that's not the right thing. This is the right thing. Like there is no right or wrong. It all is. It all is. So if it speaks to you, let it speak to you. If it doesn't speak to you, don't, you know, anyway. We're going to open up for personal readings, but we're going to jump out briefly and jump right back in because I want to close out this reading so that we can upload it to YouTube. So if y'all want to jump in to the queue, we're going to be right back 30 seconds or so. You can drop a cash app, Venmo right there, PayPal Zell in the bio. You're always welcome to hit that follow so you can come right back when we go like live in like 30 seconds. You can even send this to yourself. And if you want to jump in the queue and secure yourself the first spot right away, you're welcome to. Cash out Venmo right there. PayPal Zelle in the bio. 1555 for the exchange tonight. You can comment your question. Hey, 420. What's up, Jody? You can comment your question in your donation. Rest well, then. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you, everybody, for chilling with us. Like I said, we're about to close out. We're going to jump right back. Drop that follow if you want to be in the next live stream. I will see you in moments. Rest well. Peace. Always a pleasure. Godspeed.